Hello, welcome to Rights of Woman. Um, I'm absolutely delighted to be here today with Mina Kandasamy, poet, novelist, essayist, translator, artist, actor. It's one hell of a list. Oh, no. <laughs> um, a debut novel, The Gypsy Goddess, came out two years ago. Three, three. three years ago. It was one of my uh, books of the year. That I think I read it the year after, mm -hmm. and it's one of my books of the year that year, so highly recommend it. And a latest novel, When I Hit You, or a portrait of the, the writer as a young wife. Uh, is a new novel which is also already uh, getting lots of critical acclaim. So that's what we're here to talk about mostly today. Hi, Mina. Hi. <laughs> How are you today? I'm good. Excellent. Get st stuck straight in. So I wanted to talk about on the publicity material that went yeah. out for When I Hit You. Yeah. The book was described as auto fiction. Mm -hmm. So. And there's this thing around women's writing, I think, where women, it's assumed that women are writing autobiographically, regardless mm -hmm. of what it is they're writing about. Um, and calling it autofiction seems to confirm that real life element to it. How does it feel to have a novel based on your experiences of domestic violence within marriage out in the world? Um, I think um, uh, what you say is very right about women's writers' stories being, you know, reduced to their own experience, which is also why. I, I, even if they go on to win awards or write really breathtaking, groundbreaking books. And I think when I started, this was one of the things for me that I was not going to write my story. So if you see Gypsy Goddess, it's set in another time. There's not yeah. one person you can identify, just me, you know, in the book. And so, yeah, I was like really uh, trying to not be autobiographical in that sense. Mm -hmm. and get far away from it as possible. So that was one of the conscious decisions to write something very political, which again is something that women don't do, yeah. or, as, or, or, or even when they do, it's seen as something uh, that they cannot do, or it's just not received politically. Even if they write a political book, it's received as a personal book mm. or as a personal journey. And I think that that's very important. And so uh, I was, yeah, surely one of the people who would have thought, oh, this is just her story. like. Couldn't she imagine another story? So yes, uh, you know it's nice to admit when one is wrong. And <laughs> then I got into this marriage, and then I think uh, why I would use this word out of fiction to, to describe? I think there's layers and layers of uh, reason for it. One is that uh, it's autobiographical fiction, but it's also largely a fiction because somewhere during the marriage it becomes like uh, you are waiting. For to forge the course of the story mm -hmm. very actively and you are knowing that you are doing a narrative out of it like you're stuck in something but you have to find the narrative to get out so mm -hmm. the tools of fiction are what is going to get you out mm -hmm. you know? so it really you know it tilts its hat in a sense to fiction but it's also the idea of the auto fiction I, I, I don't know there was this uh, article on the web I'm just bad with names about how auto fictions are largely uh, the Kunstler Roman or the story of the artist and you know the artist's progression and I really thought that this was huge uh, this novel especially teased out you know uh, elements of uh, you know becoming the writer or the quest mm. to become the writer or the artistic necessity of you know establishing one's own identity as a women writer so for me all of this was important but I don't think it's uh, a completely uh, you know it's it's not it, it stops absolutely short of being a memoir because uh, this is not my life like if I was yeah. writing my life I would have much more to say <laughs> not about four bad months that I endured so. mm. but at the same time for me it was important to identify that you know you can go through this kind of experience and one reason why we also are averse to women's experiences because we think it's so domestic, we think it's all kitchen mm. sink, <laughs> and we don't understand that at that kitchen sink it could be a very intellectual person, not that it matters if the person is not intellectual, but it could be a very thinking person, it could be a feeling person, it could be an activist, it could be a writer who is just facing this slow abuse, and so to even tease out that kind of level of abuse for me was important to say it could happen to me, in a sense making I think it also has an effect on broader society, like, oh, she's speaking out, so I'm going to speak out. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's an interesting point about people. I think people think it happens to a certain type of person, so it's yeah. interesting to see a, a clearly intelligent yeah, person. Yeah, you, you also think that, that, oh, but how could it happen to a feminist, or it just happened to <laughs> yes. you know, very soft, soft people, or 
just the working class or you know just drunken husbands you know mm -hmm. or like uh, often people don't even think men do it like I was at this Tamil event and oh but it's an animal beastly thing no 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 it's not like mm -hmm. it's a very human thing that this kind of thing happens and we have to address it right there you know yeah um, I was really interested in a, a comment that you make at the beginning I want to talk about throwing devices, sort of, but alongside something else. So there's a comment that you say, the number one lesson I've learned as a writer, don't let people remove you from your own story. Mm -hmm. Because you, you start with this framing device with the mother who's mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. trying to take the story away. Um, and I thought when I, I, I read When I Hit You, that you, what you were trying to do was reframe women's experience. And I was interested whether that was your intention. And it was about reclaiming a story that's become men's story to tell rather than women's? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, and uh, in, in fact it's, it's, it's not only about, um, you know, uh, it's not only about just the narrative or the, you know, within the framework of the narrative work or the novel or whatever that you're talking about men, but even outside, like, people are so curious, like, who was he, what was he, how is he, what's his name, what's mm. he doing, and I'm like, don't make it about him, just, mm. just make it about the women, you know, like, this is what happens to women, and like, she's slowly being killed in so many ways, like, and so just listen to her instead of, yeah, again making it about men. And I think for me, the, the other thing about the story is also like, I think there is one man beating his wife, you know, mm. in, in a troubled marriage. But I think there are so many other people who are beating these women, you know, like people yeah. who refuse to look at this, people who refuse to stop the man, people who tell her to bear it out, to wait it out. People actually get a high if you're going to talk to them about it, you know, like, no. But is beating her, you know what I mean? Like all these hush wish whispers. And I think there's so much collusion. And I think when I wanted to write this story, I wanted to say, like, become, you know, like, reclaim a certain dignity about this suffering, mm -hmm. but also at the same time, like, this whole idea that whatever is happening, I'm not going to make this into a voyeurist thing, you know, like, where you're not able to get off on the fact that a woman is being hit, you know, mm -hmm. and therefore to, to talk about it, but at the same time, uh, not, not to, you know, not to make it a spectacle. That was important for me. Yeah. And so the the subtitle of the novel yeah, clearly yeah. a reference to James Joyce. Yes, it is. And um, I think uh, I think as a writer, especially as somebody who writes experimental fiction, you owe so much to James Joyce. And even as a poet, I used to you know like just read up in Joyce because he's got this phenomenal influence over language. And so yes, uh, and at the same time. Uh, for me, t one of the reasons why I chose this title was also just to highlight the difference of mm. what it means for a, a male writer to be on the quest to be an artist and what it is for the female writer to be on, s on a similar mm. quest to, you know, become an novelist or a writer or an artist or whatever. And that's why I think I played with the title and obviously it was a reference. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Right, you already talked about the fact that you, that you wrote a political novel to start with, and yeah. actually, when I hit you, it was a political novel mm -hmm. too. There's a, there's a big theme about politics yeah. in there, and, and men on the left, which is a whole conversation in itself, yes. I think. Um, but I'm interested in what your link is between politics and people's lives, whether that's collective lives, like in The Gypsy Goddess, or whether it's individual in When I Hit You. Um, I think in the first question of you know the left and what happens to women, and uh, I really had this choice. I think, uh, like large parts of the novel are fictionalized, like where I grew up or where the story takes place, or you know, um, you know, this I've gone a lot of trouble to hide people's identities mm. and stuff like that, or just invent them. But I think one of the things for me was to, so I had a very conscious choice. Do I tell the people that? this abuser comes from a Maoist or communist background to hide it and I think it's very central to the abuse and I think by not talking about it we are not doing anybody any favours mm -hmm. and it's and I think cleaning up the left and especially the misogyny in the left and the abuse of women in the left and some of this you know uh, the use of Marxism and Leninism and you know basically twisting it and like devil quoting the scriptures thing to abuse women that has to fucking stop and I think we have to look at it because more and more women are going to under capitalism be disempowered are going to join the revolution are going to you know be part of the resistance and we don't want them to face abuse you know they're mm. already facing so much exploitation under capitalist society that when people come to you know be on the f front lines we want that to be a fucking safe space and I think it's very important we are having these conversations yes to the left is like 
laughing stock. It's like, yeah, maybe one person, maybe there are 5,000 people who identify as the far left. But I think these people are capable of change and these people also need clean up, you know, so I think mm -hmm. it's very important for me. At the same time, yes, politics does play a life within the collective and within the individual and I think uh, there is just no not looking at it. Yeah. And, uh, and I say this as somebody whose father was a full-timer for the Hindu nationalist right. <laughs> so <laughs> I have traveled the spectrum and I think that yes, it, it has enormous choices on how, you know, what happens to women and, you know, and to children especially. So I, I would be really, like, really aware of that. And I think mm. it's very important that we address it. I don't think there, are, there is anything called being a political or you just cannot afford that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, now, everything we've talked about so far is really serious, but there is some humour in the book, yeah. particularly with the, the mother story at the beginning. Yeah. It's quite funny that she wants to reframe it all through lice and hair and, mm -hmm. and, and, and well, women's looks essentially, which <laughs> we've acted up funny again, but, but some yeah. of the comments that she makes quite funny. Is it important to you that there's a humorous element in there? Um, I think. Uh, I think humour is one of the ways of survival and uh, at some point you have to learn to laugh at yourself mm -hmm. and to laugh at, you know, it, these experiences because otherwise you just completely be broken down, you know, and like, and you'd also get into this endless spiral of, I think the biggest thing that I had to battle is self-sympathy and you're like, oh, but this happened to you, like, yes, it happened, but you know, this is a fresh day, have mm -hmm. a fresh start and I think, yeah, in that sense, you have to be like, at least I am ceaselessly cruel with myself and, you know, not giving. And as a writer as well, it's the same thing. So, you know, you have to, at the same time, yeah, talk about, it's uh, it's not just humour, but it's also like understanding society where we don't address things, but we address them in very oblique ways. Mm. And uh, like, uh, you know, we just don't address what's happening uh, around, you know, women, but we would talk about, you know, very superficial things because the extent of the horror that stares at us is so fucking painful and so yeah we just can talk about you know other nice things it's about oh but you know we have this speciality in my village where we make this sweet and this is the desert but yeah my village is also the pe place where people burn people because they belong to a different caste or something you know what i mean mm -hmm. like so this is the kind of thing that happens like yeah you always have a narrative on the surface which is nice and funny and joyful and at the heart of it what are we trying to hide? Like, mm. what's this deflecting from? And I think as a writer, it's quite uh, interesting to watch that and to probe and to find that. Yeah, yeah. great. Um, and I wanted to ask. We talked a little bit about you, the you, how your work relates to Joyce for a start. Yeah. But I'm just, every chapter starts with an epigraph. Yeah. From another writer's work, all women. Yes. Um, and there's a mixture of women from different cultures, different parts of the world. Yeah. Um, where do you see your work in relation to other writers? Uh, I think it. Isn't there a quote by Marcus somewhere? Possibly. Ah. I, 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 I think, the, yeah, that's the only male right. I think I loved entering, not sure. But I think one of the things for me was, uh, and this is something that I face irrespective of, you know, this marriage or any marriage is that when you're a women writer, you start belonging to a stereotype, like even mm. if you necessarily don't, you know, say that, oh, yeah, I love Anne Sexton, I love Sylvia Plath, and you have a bond, a bonding with them, or you like Wendy and Drugs, and you start to live in this alternative world where they exist along with you. Mm. I think what actually happens is that society looks at you through them, so you're always the next Kamala Das, you're always the next that you Roy, you know, so people are like always connecting you to this unbroken chain of women writers because it makes, it's for patriarchal or misogynist people, it makes it easier to vilify you, to just mm -hmm. put you in one of these lists, so, and I think it's, it's, it's quite crazy because this happens, so it's like, oh, but you're suffering from depression. Isn't that something that all women writers go through? Isn't that something that Sylvia Plath goes through? So it becomes like this, um, you know, you're grouped in club. But at the same time, they're also the only people you reach out, isn't it? Because they've been through similar experiences. And these women writers speak more to you than, you know, like a person across the room. And therefore, you draw strength from them and you identify with them. And I think there's a, l a large you know, an unbroken chain of, you know, what what kinship that women writers, dead mm -hmm. and alive, have to, with each other and how they live yep. with each other. And I think it's very important for me to belong and to reclaim them, I think, yeah. Mm. I like that idea yeah. of reclaiming them, yeah, yeah. As, as part of something else. 
Um, so you write in a variety of forms, fiction, poetry, essays. Yeah. Do you have a preference? Uh, I think at, at the moment I like the novel form a lot because it's it just takes you in completely and it's uh, it's where you cease to exist except in relation to what you're trying to do with the novel. So I think it's really immersive in the sense like completely. Whereas I think in the others it's more like it's just a you know a, a little explosive bomb. <laughs> you just go off and then you can go back to being yourself. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah, I think they're they're just different and they require different things of me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I find the novel very challenging and therefore very interesting because it also requires extreme stamina, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. uh, when you look at when you look at poetry, it's like the whole book of poetry is about three thousand, four thousand words, but it's really intense and precise. And when you're a poet writing a novel, you try to do the same precision, but over like really much more longer form. Yeah. Um, so it makes sense there to ask, are you working on anything at the minute that we're allowed to know about? Uh, well, I've just got an email f two days ago from my agent saying, oh, okay, what are you doing <laughs> now? And then I said, yeah, I'm trying to get the voice right because I think the voice is very important for me. And it's like, and he looked at it and said, good, good, I want more of it. And then he wrote back his saying, keep at it, keep at it. So yeah, there's something I'm, tr I'm trying to work. And um, well, I could, I could tell you what it's about. It's partly set here and it's partly set in, uh, in uh, India, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, and in Far East. It just looks like refugees and people who've been through yeah, detention, and especially because I'm a Tamil speaking woman, and they've worked with uh, you know, ex militants as well as mm. you know, people who claim refuge. And what do they go through and, ha and stuff like that? But it's also a story, so yeah. Well, that sounds interesting. Mm. So, um, I wanted to ask about there's, there's an important moment in the book where it feels like a real turning point in the book where the husband asks the wife to deactivate her social media account. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason that I'm asking about it is because writers spend so much time on social media. Yeah. It's, it's where we met, if you want to talk about me, on social media. Yeah. And so she talks about feeling isolated. I think as writers, it's a platform that people use because yeah. they're at home on their own. And I was just interested in how you view social media. I think my relation, sorry, <laughs> my relationship with social media has changed over the years. I, I remember in 2002, I was like 17, we were running the small 50, 60 page bi-monthly magazine on Dalit issues because mm. uh, not much was being done in the mainstream at that point. Mm. It's like 15 years ago. And we would print 500 copies, like get the photos, get the source, put it on page maker. But the copies would just stay in the office because we wouldn't have got the funding to send them out, mm. you know. And she'd be like, it's pickling and this is all a hard work. And then you're like, how are we going to do postage? How are we going to send contributor copies? And then Facebook happens, and in a minute you you can share the same thing with thousands of people, like mm. tens of thousands of people, and it's so empowering, it's so liberating, and it changes it. It really changes yeah. because it changes discourse, and in that sense, it's it's enormously powerful. So I do think that yeah, social media is important, and I do use it to yeah sometimes uh, you know share these kind of things that happen, whether it's my timeline, other people's timeline. So I I think of you know being on social media as some kind of intervention as well, about, as, but apart from, yeah, I do share, you know, like silly recipes or what I feel or what I feel about the weather, all this kind of thing. But I also, for for one, I, I don't know if it's a personal thing, I just want to share, like I don't carry a phone on me like most times, so even if I care, if I carry it, doesn't have any data plan on it because sometimes mm. the hate is vicious mm. and I can do without that, you know, yeah. like I, I can really do without that because it just starts consuming you and eating you up from the inside and you haven't done anything possible to deserve that level mm. of hatred and sometimes you want to self-preserve yourself so yeah it's mostly like a hit and run like I just go there check everything <laughs> and then just get off because yeah I don't mm. want to dwell on this you know painful stuff that's also part yeah. of social media because it's become very toxic yeah yeah, yeah, particularly for women. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I suppose my, my relationship with just social media is I wouldn't be doing this if mm. I hadn't been on it. Mm. And the last question's um, about the blog, because obviously my blog's about recommending women writers, and I'm interested in anything you've read recently by a woman that you think we should be reading. Um, someone recommended uh, Sarah Mangus's work to me. Right, yeah. Uh, so I read uh, 300 Arguments. And I read Ongoingness, and I think she, she's great. Like she's really great in terms of what she can encapsulate and what she, uh, you know, talks about. So yeah, that's 
that's one writer I recommend. I also read a lot online, like everybody else. Mm. So, uh, I think, yeah, some of the stuff that's carried in Guernica is great. Mm. Like, yeah, so I, I look it up and, yeah, read, read stuff there. And otherwise, uh, I'm reading uh, Helen McClory's uh, Flesh of the Peach. Yes. Which I like. Uh, for some reason, I think this book was there, and then there was Jean Twinterson, Sex in the Cherry, and my partner was like, Cherry, Peach, like, <laughs> what is going on with the titles? <laughs> you know, so yeah, I'm, I'm like, yeah, halfway through that book, so I'm just reading it. Sometimes I also realize, like, I'm not reading enough men. So right. I, I went and bought a Martin and was there, but just, <laughs> just to feel good, you know, I'm just not reading men, so yeah. I'm not sure I'm reading Martin here, but this is the way to feel good, but there we go. Yeah, but just, I saw a male name and I felt like, just so yeah. that I do my bit to make men feel better. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. And that just reminded me, you're doing quite a few events, aren't you, I think, soon. Yeah. And you, you're you at the Edinburgh Festival with Helen McClory. Yes, I'm right. So yeah. that should be an exciting event. We're yes, quite I'm just really looking forward yeah. to that, yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Right, if you have um, come here from uh, The Rights of Woman, you'll know that my review's over there. If you've come straight to YouTube, um, there's a link below to the review. There are also links to buy Mina's books, both of which I highly recommend. Um, when I Hit You is one of the best things I've read this year, so I'd really recommend that you, you go and read it. Uh, there you go. Thank you. Thank <laughs> Thanks, you. Mina.